for some reason, there's like a joke online, people talk about this, when they start using the LN command, all their rational processing ability just flies out the window and everyone's like, I can never remember the order to these arguments. So I'm gonna teach you a little trick for this, okay? We wanna create a hard link of foo.txt and call it bar.txt. So that's the order we're gonna do. Now when we ls, we have two files there. Hey, that's really simple. I'll talk about the specifics later, but to remember the order of arguments, it's surprisingly simple. When I cp file one into file two, this is the source and this is the destination. The destination or the thing you are creating, the thing that will exist at the end of this command is at the right, okay? Let's talk about mv, move file one to file two. The thing that you are creating, the thing that will exist at the end of this command is file two, okay? Let's talk about ln, the thing that you are creating, the thing that will exist at the end of this command invocation is at the right, source, destination. Let's make a symlink. We just use ln-s, we're not gonna make one here, but let's symlink file one to file two. The thing that you are making, the thing that will exist at the end of this command invocation is at the right. Here is your source and here is your destination. Don't think dash s source, no. Dash n modifies the behavior of ln. This isn't an option to the dash s flag. Dash s is a Boolean flag and file one is an operand to the ln command. So the source of the ln command is here, the exact same way the source is here, the dash s modifies what type of link it makes. Source on the left, destination on the right, whatever's on the right should exist at the end of this command invocation. It might already exist, maybe if you're overwriting a file, but at the end of this command, this file should exist if the command was successful. That's how to remember those arguments, okay?